Hello everyone, it's great to have you within the four walls, the first and only television show that takes on every issue affecting education and the education sector. I am Mr. Adolf, the teacher. Now here is the green board. As usual, the classwork holds what I call almost a book review and the introduction to the main topic of the show, study strategies. Then the examination, a special guest will be joining me to discuss the several study problems and the necessary strategies. Thereafter, grading and assignment. But first, let's look at what's happening within the education sector. Former Vice Chancellor, University of Ibadan, Professor Lufemi Baniro, has called for review of university's curriculum. To meet the industry requirements in, in, in 21st century, he made this known at the University of Benin during the inauguration of Center of Excellence in Reproductive Health, established by World Bank, delivering a lecture titled Sustainable Development Goal and the Nigerian University System. He said, and I quote, there is need for review of university's curriculum. Our universities need to focus on training, research, innovation, and extension capability to tackle these problems. If we build the capacity of existing institutions through funding and research, we will have the capacity to solve the unemployment and technological challenges facing us as a nation. Down to Southeast Nigeria, authorities in Alvani Kokuk Federal College of Education, Oweri, is set to sign a memorandum of understanding with Medgar Evers College, Brooklyn, New York on the development of joint research activities among others. Director of Academic Collaboration and Linkages, Anthony Duraco, explained after a meeting with officials with Medgar Evers College in Abuja. He said the agreement to be signed by both colleges entails student and staff exchange program development and other academic research and curriculum development, among others. He said the MOU would also enable the colleges to take part in international seminars and conferences. We'll take a quick break. When we return, I will be bringing um, the book titled In Independence, written by Sarah Ladipo Mayinka. Don't go, I'll be right back. Welcome back. Sarah Ladik Pomayinka, the author of Independence, was raised in Nigeria and has lived in Kenya, France, and England. She holds a PhD from the University of California, Berkeley, and teaches literature at San Francisco State University. Her writing includes essays, academic papers, book reviews, and short stories. Sarah is, uh, Sarah's first uh, novel, Independence was published by Legend Press and Cassava Republic Press in 2008. This superb novel, which only has 162 pages, is a neatly tailored story of academic migration, culture clash, and the, and the search for love and self-actualization through eras after the Nigerian political independence. It is the story of Tayo Ajayi, uh, uh, who sailed off to Oxford University on scholarship where he discovered many intrigues, including the love of his life, Vanessa. Their journey rolls through three continents and four turbulent decades. That's, that's the story in uh, Independence, a wonderful book I advise you to read. And this book is said to have been recommended by JAMP Nigeria for the examination. Awesome, great book that I have here. So uh, going to what I have today, my guest will be joining me, but this is it. There are just many issues around studying behaviors within the four walls of the school. Some are positive, some are negative. Why many students are so stranded with predicaments? Our focus today is on the undergraduate students. I'm now being joined by academic master student Izzat Sani to examine diverse study strategies in our tertiary institutions. So we welcome to the program. Thank you. Good afternoon. This, this uh, issue about study strategies, I first and foremost, at your undergraduate level, how did you study? Oh, there are so many predicaments, there are so many challenges around studying. Beyond going for classes, 
because then I was studying in two different departments. So I would have to walk down from one department to the other, trying to meet up with every class, trying to sit in the front, and so on. So after the whole class, getting back to my hostel was also a challenge because we were so much in the room. Yes, my school was not a school that gave accommodation, so we tried to find a place and we all lived together. So studying is a bit challenging because I have to wake up sometimes in the midnight to read, and after reading, to know if, at least have I gained something tonight. And sometimes it might be very noisy, so I'll have to leave my hostel, find somewhere quiet. Sometimes the library might work. Sometimes any available quiet area is just good for me to study. Okay, so uh, at the point where you, you begin to discover yourself, because I know the first year in the university, it's very difficult to discover yourself as to how do I study successfully. So at what point did you begin to discover, okay, this is how I can manage my time, I can manage the methods in studying? That was 300 level. Not even when I saw my, my colleagues' results, and they were on very strong 2-1. One. One the first one was on 4.2, the other on 3.9, and I was like, no, I need to get there. Then I was on 3.4 something, and I was like, no, I can do this as well. We are just the same, and I can get here. So I started changing my styles. I started finding other alternatives. Initially, I would attend tutorials, but I realized that after listening, I need to go back and look through to see, have I really learned something, or was I really joking? Am I serious, or have I gained something? So I'll have to go back and study again after the tutorial. One of my friends knew my weakness then, that I don't, really, I don't learn where it is noisy. So okay. she'll, just, she'll give me the key to her apartment, and ask me to lock myself in door for like a day or two. So when she gets back, she starts asking questions like, okay, what have you learned? What, what did you read? What is this? What is that? And she starts throwing the questions. Even it got to statistics too, right. where we have to cram formulas of PSC moments, uh, products correlation, okay. and all those things. So she just tell me, she just asked me to use acronyms. So I acronymize I those uh, formulas, to save them, and so on. Then I started enjoying studying. You okay? You enjoyed studying alone, basically. Yes, yes. Sometimes group study as well. After reading, I know yes, I already have enough stuff to give. So when you ask questions, they keep flowing and keep flowing. So and it's fun knowing that yes, I can do it. But which was the best for you, the group reading or the solo reading? I think it's the solo reading for me. It is the solo reading. How do you assimilate? Do you cram? No, I, I don't like cramming at all. It doesn't work for me. That was the course we did then, PHE, and they said we'd, we'd have to memorize the steps in carrying out first aid. I was like, no, <laughs> hope I'm not doomed this time, because it's not my thing to memorize. I like to read, understand, and it's like it's happening to me in the real sense. So I put myself in that condition while I'm reading, and just like you're sharing a story and we are talking about it. All right. That's how I like to study. Not that pressure, like, no, no, it needs to be sequential. It needs to be... So when I'm doing that, it's, it's an extra task for me. I know I just have to do it, but I have to sit back and do it again and again and again. That's where the acronym comes in. I have to start giving acronyms to everything. Then I start talking about the acronyms. I ask me to mention them. Okay, so yeah. the, some of the teachers or lecturers, I would say, would use certain methods like giving you whatever it is they want to give you, then you have to give it back to them. Then other lecturers give you the opportunity to explore and be yeah. creative on your own. What side do you fall in? I, I think I prefer exploring. You should give me whatever it is and I should just give, my, give it back and show myself like I can really do this. And um, being diverse, not on that same line you want me to tread. But whichever way, it is the Nigeria system, we need to blend. If I have a lecturer that wants me to give back exactly what he has given to me, I just have to do it. But if it is going beyond that, yes, I enjoy exploring as well. Okay, so let's talk about the issue uh, with environment where you are studying. You said you like studying a room, alone in a room, yes. locked up. Mm. So sometimes I understand that when you are alone, you, so many thoughts can come in to distract. Do you experience that? Hmm, and yes. how do you manage it if yes? <laughs> I did. Especially during my final year. There were lots of thoughts coming in like, okay, after studying, job, marriage, and so on. 
and I need to do this, I need to read, I need to... You know, I told you I have a goal there. Yes. I was at least, if I couldn't get to first class, two one should do. So now these distractions were coming. Then I had a roommate that would keep receiving that call throughout the night, distracting me. And she was just like, <laughs> and I was there reading alone. I yet I want to assimilate. But it got to a point and I told myself that if I want this, I want it. When I get there, it will call for other attractions. Like people will appreciate it. Wow, we've done this. No. So I just locked up my mind and pushed off all the distractions. And I just I kept going. All right, let's move a bit from you and see other students in the tertiary institutions because other students, like I was, I experienced certain problems. I went to library first and foremost because my friends, the friends that I liked most were in the library. And I knew that I could stay for six hours not gaining a single thing. But the thing is, everybody would like to say, if you are in the library, you are yes, a fickle and you are studying hard. <laughs> so at least let them see that picture about me. How did you see the library? Thank you. Before I can say anything about the library, I would implore every Nigerian student to study smart and not hard. You know that perception oh. like, you are going to the library, everybody will be like, oh, she's studying really hard. It happened when I was in my 200 level. Then, you know, after that jovial me, going around laughing and everything, so someone had to come to me and ask me, look at your results, you're doing well. And, have, and she, will start, she can study for at least 10 hours without sleeping, not blinking her eyes. And I know her for that. And she was complaining about her results. What happened? That's where you need to study smart and not hard. Not just carrying the book in the library, 10 hours, studying, studying, and studying. But yet, you need to sit down and realize who you really are. Okay, okay. how well? There are sometimes you read for at least 30 minutes and you can say back what you have read. And there are sometimes your mood is not just it. And you just feel like, no, don't let me do this. Let me just cool off. And you, I think you get my point there. I get your point. So for every Nigeria student, there I would say study smart and not add. You see some, some students um, in, the, in this particular group, they are friends. And you see some joking around. Why some will be cold and moody like, oh, why is this person doing this? The one joking around knows, understand yeah. his or herself. He knows how he learns and study well, undistracted, and he's so confident about himself. That is why he has that courage to jump around. Why you feel? Oh, why is it? Why is it like this? And it's not serious. And definitely, this kind of people always distract the rest of the group. Yes, that is their style. That is where you need to reverse, evaluate yourself, and think. Oh, do I think? Do, can I continue with this kind of person? If I can't continue, then I need to devise or re strategize. How do I go my own way to achieve best study, now, best method of study? Let's assess the kind of people that only steal your knowledge. They never read, they never go to library, they don't open their books at all. But wait for you during the time of discussion or the time they have the opportunity to, to throw tap questions, your point. tap your point. How would, how would you say that helps? Although, to some people, it works. Some people know that that exists. And when you ask them to share their points, they're like, no, I'm not sharing my points. But to me, I believe um, as a teacher, as a learner as well, you shouldn't be selfish with knowledge. If you have knowledge, share knowledge. I would only advise the person sharing the knowledge to break it down. Break it down, let the person get the points. And just leave the rest. If you're having an A, there's nothing beyond A. You understand? <laughs> you have your own A, she has your A. It's even a glory to you that you assisted in making her success or you, uh, you or she successful. So to me, if the person is a good listener, because to me, when my lecturer is giving in the class, yes. I like to listen and look into the person's eye. All right. It helps me a lot because I tap a lot of experience. It's even his method, his styles, I get from that. Because while he's talking, you see his idea. And for every teacher, every lecturer, there is this point of bias. Okay. No matter how intelligent you tend to be, they want you to at least subdue yourself to them. You understand? Okay. So you need to come down to their level. After learning and everything, you're good. So they want to see their idea. And it's, that's why I, I like to be a good listener. We'll take a short break now. When we we'll come back, we'll be discussing the depressions around studying, then some of the I, um, things that you would do to help. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome back. 
Still with me is Ezat Sani, a master's degree student. So we are still talking about studying strategies. And another strategy that most people employ is the one that I have used, the black coffee strategy. Because when you have a lot to cover and the examination is just about a few weeks or a few days away, you have you've have to step it up. And I used black coffee at a point, but it backfired. What did you use? I tried coffee once, but it didn't work at all. I was just blackout. Really? I was blackout. I couldn't assimilate. I was just reading on and on and on. It got to a point I was just crying like, oh, I wasted my time. So I just went back to sleep, then wake up the next day, then continued. But I knew someone very close to me that I used coffee continuously for two weeks. And she told me that after using coffee, what they do in a pier is that they take milk to subdue the pressure of the uh, coffee. The, the potency of the coffee. Yes. But, 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 um, coffee is legal, but let's look at the ones that are not legal. Some go by hard drugs. Yeah. Um, um, tramadol, tramadol codeine, and codeine and, and so on within the tertiary institutions and you wouldn't blame them somehow because the pressure could be so much especially when you look at your grade but I think the pressure can be controlled the first year is the most challenging part in studying because then you are trying to get yourself but the, the, the uh, subsequent years you can just sit down and discover yourself. Some little tips I adopted in my pre uh, subsequent years were immediately I got the lecture notes. I go back home at least in the night before sleeping, if it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I study. I bring out those points. I study from what I've, yes. My textbook, I'll go back as a reference to whatever the lecturer has said. Then the second thing is that I make acronyms. I acronymize, as I said earlier. Okay. Yes, that's more very smart logic I use. Okay. Then I make acronyms. Then I make sure I don't stress because since the time I told you I took I took coffee, no, I wouldn't stress myself. Rather, I'll look for other ways. I'll plan myself and look for other ways to remove that stress because when the examination is around the corner, you know this rush like oh exam and the pressure, um the side effects of that pressure if you are not very careful at managing it is that during the examination you just go blackout yes and the people asking that no this is not you that is why you need to manage that stress by managing your time effectively so instead of adding that pressure on yourself like no i need to do this manage your time well at least basically you have three months to study before the examination so during the three months at least if it is 20 20 minutes in the day wow people will just call you genius like no you are the best so for me, I think that's a very good way to manage stress. So, um, at the point where you got depressed, did you ever experience depression? I did. Yes, I did. So, how did you handle your depression? Did you meet the school counselor? I was busy talking to myself because people that I could talk to, I felt they wouldn't understand me. I had to tell my dad, and my dad is this prayerful type, you know. He just said, start praying, do this prayer, and so on. I was like, okay, now he has given me the prayer. So knowing if the prayer has really worked, I started talking to myself. No, you can do this. No, you did it to this level so you can excel. Don't give up at this point. That's one thing um, every undergraduate student needs to understand. Just realize your worth. Don't let anything bring you down. Because at some point, you feel like, no, you are not worth it. Not even when you are trying to talk among your peers or in the class and some people are just be bringing you down. Like, no, what are you saying? Keep quiet. No, you don't get depressed with that. Just pick yourself up and there's something we call self-worth. You know your self-worth and from there, yes, you keep talking to yourself. And when you are good, if you study, then you realize you assimilate. That was how I conquered my depression because I was just talking to myself. And after then, I read and I understood. I wrote the examination and my friends were like, that's how you continue pretending as if you don't know. Yeah. And you know, look at your results. You are beating us. Yeah. Glory be to God. <laughs> That's what I just said. Because through the years, every average Nigerian student go through depression. I know of some students that do not get accommodation their first year of study. Yes. It's a bit challenging on them. I met a girl at a tertiary station. She was crying around 10 p.m. in the night. I asked her, what's wrong? She said um, she couldn't say it out. That's the challenge we face. 
we don't really have people to talk to as students. We don't have people that will understand. Sometimes, you know, you feel when you tell people your problem, it might sound funny, like, is this a problem? Yes. You understand? So she couldn't say it. So I tried to calm her down. Then I said, okay, there's nothing you are facing now that has never existed. Just need to calm down. I said, where do you stay? She said she, she was staying in the mosque. No hostel accommodation. So she just, she just sleep outside to pass the night. The next day, she go back to class again. Those kind of things can bring, bring depression. So I think that night, her friend said something bad to her. She couldn't really express. She would okay. not want me to feel bad about her friend. Okay. So, but I had to calm her down. No, you can scale through this. You know this? This self-realization. Right. You, yes. You, you put yourself so high. Like, you can even do better than those scholars. Okay. okay. Finally, um, I, 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 I'd love to not avoid this question. What would anybody who find himself or herself in the wrong department or wrong faculty do about it? Because definitely you begin to fail when you don't like where you are. I can, with that, let me just answer with a real life situation here. The guy just graduated from uni, like I think two years back. But before then, he was a medical student, I think at um, last week, I don't know, or Osu. He came to a program and told us that if you are spending your years doing a course you don't want, it's better. You pull out now before it is too late. Pull out. That was what he said. And he did it. It actually worked for him. Because after um, he was about to write the final MB, final exam, then he realized that no, he has been wasting years because his father asked him to go for medicine. Wow. So what he did was just that he took jam and told his father that wasted years are over. I'm going out. He went to Inland to study MASCOM. He graduated with a fourth class. And wow. now he's editing, doing all those things. That's he even awesome. gave his, um, he has a name, Utopian Ideas. Wow. So he has been editing and doing all That's those awesome. Things. Before you go, we have what is called the grading segment. This segment is you grading the student and the institution, basically. So the grading is A, C, and F. A is excellent, C is fair, and F is terrible. So for students, whoever it is, how would you grade the students based on, currently, based on how they handle pressures within the tertiary institutions? In a, C, and F. In different institutions? In different institutions. Do you want to mention institutions? Or? No, 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 in all. How they manage, let me say C. They are managing fairly. They are managing fairly. How are the institutions in Nigeria helping with this? Realizing that study strategies are not in place. For now, <laughs> except for a child that has good backup from home, I met a girl at Yama Tech. She was making a, a, a material to read. And she was like, what's all this rubbish? Let me just read this in our path and get out of here. I realized Nigerians are just forcing themselves into school just to have these certificates. Do you understand? This zeal, this willingness is no longer there. So for the institution, what are you giving them in terms of the grade? I'll give C. Fair. Yes, C. I think C, yes. Sometimes the lecturers don't even understand what students are going through. They just want you to, they want to put all the loads on you and they want you to bring it back. And, and they exist. move on and see yeah, the next set of and next people. Set. Yeah. Thank you so much, Izzat yeah. Sani. It's wonderful <laughs> discussing with you and sharing mm -hmm. your thoughts on study strategies. So before we go, you have to go to the Facebook or, of Four Walls, Four Walls on Facebook and Tell us, what is your best study strategies? Share your thoughts on that and we will get the feedback. Until we come your way next time, stay blessed. Bye-bye.